Welcome to Netbook Study. This is the editorial analysis of 7th October 2023. Let's start the discussion. Uh, today we are going to discuss two editorials from Indian Express and one from Hindu. The first article talks about Monetary Policy Committee. What are the challenges this MPC is facing and also the present scenario of economy with respect to inflation. These aspects have been discussed here. Let's get into the discussion of this. There is a committee called Monetary Policy Committee. The main objective of this committee is to tame inflation. Uh, the objective is to maintain the optimum inflationary levels in the country. So in order to maintain that, this MPC of RBI, it is maintaining high interest rates as of now in the country. There are two reasons behind it. One is external reasons, another is domestic factors. We will discuss these uh, reasons in detail once we get into the article. But as of now, you just have this idea that there are two main factors which directly affects the inflation in our country. The one is external uh, reasons. Another thing is domestic factors. Even though external uh, reasons, external factors, they have a bearing effect on Indian economy and Indian inflationary figures. But domestic factors, domestic reasons, it matters a lot with respect to inflation in our country. And author has made some of the observation with respect to uh, inflation and in turn it gives the economic uh, growth picture. Let's go through with the observations what author has mentioned here. See uh, the risk of inflation, the whatever the inflation figures we were facing, it has gone beyond, beyond the control of policy makers. The government could not able to tame the inflation and even RBI also it was working very hard to control the inflationary numbers. But somewhere we failed to control it. Especially if you look at the inflationary numbers of July, it was almost 7.8%. It was nearing 8%. And if we look at the reasons behind this high inflationary number, the main reason was vegetable prices, especially tomato prices. It was very high. And somehow we managed to bring these inflationary numbers down. But now the new uh, problem has emerged that is crude oil prices. There is a rise in crude oil prices and it is going to cause the inflation uh, the, again in our country. So this is one of the observations. So through this observation, author is trying to give a, a macroeconomic scenario. And second, moving on to second observation, it has been done from the uh, external uh, reasons. See, we understood the Indian uh, factors for inflation. One is vegetable prices and now it is the crude oil prices. This is going to push the inflation in the country. And the second aspect, second observation is, if you look at the uh, developed economies, where the central bank of these developing economies, they are also taking a hawkish monetary policy. Hawkish policy, it means that interest rates are high. See, if the interest rates are high, then people or the industries, they will think many times before taking loans from the bank. So that because of high interest rate, they have to pay more interest to the banks. So in turn, uh, increasing in interest rate, rate, it discourages the people to get loan from the bank. So in order, so in turn, what it does is it curbs the flow of money in the market. And if you look at the reasons why central bank, banks of all these developed economies are increasing their interest rate, the reason was during COVID-19, the interest rate were very low and these economies, they were pushing uh, through this banking sector, they were releasing money to the market. But now the things have changed because of this easing monetary policy, there were scenarios where the inflation of uh, these developed countries have reached very high levels. Then what happened, these central banks, then they tried to tame the inflation. They wanted to bring back the in inflation. So how do you do this? By increasing the interest rate. rate. As I told you, if the uh, interest rate is high, the pumping towards the market, the money pumped towards the market, it is going to be reduced. So this is one of the steps to handle the inflationary figures. And if you look at the central banks, they are hiking rates continuously from almost uh, one year. You see that interest rates of whether USA or European countries, it is going again and again. They are increasing basis points on a regular interval. Now they are in a situation. If they tight too much, if they, if they increase their interest rate too much, it is going to cause the recession. 
if they lose a lot if they don't control this interest rate then it is going to cause the further inflation so they have to maintain that optimal uh, inflationary numbers and how do you do it you have to have a optimal uh, optimal tightening uh, policies and these countries are in at a very tricky position and india is learning from this situation it is very difficult to handle these kind of situation you cannot go for further increase in interest rate this is going to cause recession and if you reduce the interest rate this is going to cause the uh, inflation in the country so this is quite difficult to manipulate it is quite difficult to handle and this observation tells that india is very cautious at this uh, happenings what is happening in the developed countries and the third observation is see whatever the whether it is a monetary policy or the fiscal policy it takes some times to show result especially with respect to inflation and with respect to growth and the loose fiscal policy of usa initially it has affected the growth and inflationary figures of the usa economy now they are taking steps to tightening their fiscal policy but it will take some time to show results it will take some time to uh, control inflation and once inflation is at optimal level then it will affect on growth trajectory so it takes time uh, some time and india is very conscious in this direction india also making sure that as long as these economy of these developed uh, developed countries is uh, strong and vibrant then it is going to be reflected in indian economy also so india is very conscious that how this thing of uh, the taming inflation and uh, pushing growth ap uh, aspect of these developed developed country is going to work out india is looking for it and finally the fourth observation is see there is an advantage with uh, what is happening at this uh, point of time in western countries see because of higher interest rate the capital of uh, the peop the take it an example of usa usa has increased this interest rate so effect of it people are not taking loans from the a financial institution but at the same time these bankings they are paying more interest to the people who are depositing their money so in turn what is happening is it is attracting capital from emerging markets usually investors from these developed countries they come to countries like india and china for their investment because they get the attractive returns but what happening here with the rise in interest rate is their economy itself is giving them more money so whatever the capital they are investing whether through the foreign portfolio investment or through the debentures bonds they are taking that money out of the emerging markets and it is moving towards the usa it is moving towards the developing country so in turn what is it what what is happening here is it is strengthening the dollar and our currency rupee is going to be weakened here so this is another aspect india is worried about these are the four observation author has done with respect to inflation internal inflation as well as the external inflation how the both the things uh, internal inflation in the country and the external inflation around the world especially in the developed country how these things going to affect the indian economy you have to get the conclusion with the help of this observation and moving ahead author states that see even uh, if you look at the inflationary figures it is uh, pretty high in india but still india's growth remains strong even with this high inflation we told that in july it was around 7% and then even though it is reduced it is it does not come down below 5% so it is still high but even with this high inflation india's growth remains very strong and uh, author has given the reasons behind this uh, higher inflation the one thing is costly of crude oil and the weakening rupee as i just mentioned explain the entire concept and inflationary figures and because of erratic monsoon it directly affected the uh, cropping system agriculture uh, food grain production in the country and there are issue with uh, food supply uh, supply activity also in the country see we had all these issues still indian growth remained same last quarter india's growth was more than 7% it shows that how vibrant our economy is so there is a necessity to tame the inflation to make sure that we get proper uh, economic development and inclusive economic development in our country
but to, in order to achieve this growth in order to maintain this growth level there are some concern in our economic system and we need to address these concerns as well there are six points have been mentioned let's uh, discuss this aspect also see in july if you look at it the total inflationary figures was 7.4 percent at that time it was mainly vegetable prices and predominantly the tom tomato prices at that time so after fresh uh, vegetables arrived in the market and somehow it was helpful uh, to tame the inflation to reduce the inflation now concern is on pulses cereals and the spices their price is increasing and author says that how do you manage this you need to have a, a standard regulation to handle the prices of pulses cereals and spices because everybody in the country every household uses these things these are the basic essential commodities if their price increases then it is going to push the inflationary figures so this need to be addressed and the second thing is because the Karif crops, uh, the winter crop at this time, it is lag in cultivation of pulses and jute. And how do you manage this? Again, it is a question mark. Pulses somewhere, uh, India is planning to import from Africa and the Myanmar. So, we need to have these kind of strategies. If something goes wrong, if something is uh, not reaching our expectation with respect to agricultural production, then we should have an alternative. This is the second thing. And the third thing is there is a fear of El Nino. And El Nino has been predicted till the end of this year. El Nino is going to affect the rainfall patterns. See, for winter crops, if there is a mismatch in rainfall patterns or western disturbance, this, this is going to affect the food production, especially wheat production in the country. So, El Nino is another concern uh, that should be taken into the consideration. And, th and the fourth issue is, if you look at the reservoirs and the water level in the reservoirs are below the optimum levels. See, we need to maintain a proper optimum water level in reservoirs. Without that, it would be very difficult, especially in the summer months. And it is not only going to affect the agriculture, it is also going to affect the manufacturing sector, industries, as well as a, a domestic water facility also. So, uh, the water level in reservoirs has a direct effect on the sanitation, food production, food security, also industrial manufacturing output. On all of it, this water level in reservoir has a direct impact. So, we need to take care of this aspect also. And the new... Uh, emerging threat that is uh, oil crude oil prices the rise in crude oil pri prices it has a significant role to play in our economy because it impacts current account deficits more if the rise in crude, crude oil prices then it, it, the deficit is going to increase and in turn it is going to cause the fiscal deficit so crude oil prices are extremely crucial for the health of our uh, uh, economic system especially from the perspective of inflation and finally see various surveys they are talking about volatility in headline inflation we need to focus on headline inflation headline inflation mainly consists of food and fuel and we need to uh, have proper regulations from both the perspective managing food prices and as well as managing fuel prices so these are the concerns need to be addressed to make sure that we remain in the same growth prospectors what uh, various surveys have been given and finally conclusion has been given by the author see there is a whether it is inflation uh, or the policy analysis or the monetary policy committee decisions all these they have a direct effect on india's growth trajectory if we look at the present scenario there is a global slowdown especially usa and uh, european union they their growth level is reducing the numbers are uh, restricting so the it shows that the global slowdown is going to happen and there is a russia ukraine crisis this is also affecting the world economy this global slowdown it is going to curb the export indian export this is a matter of concern and another thing is that due to the interest rate hikes especially in india and outside also it is curbing the consumption demand again it is going to affect our growth trajectory and the third aspect is erratic weather and it this erratic weather and monsoon rainfall el nino all these aspects it is going to curb the industrial growth in our country so on the whole if you look at it india's economy is facing that burden and it is going to face the uh, burden for coming time also there are uh, high weighing issues are there and it is going it is slowing down the indian economy now the role of mpc it is it is very crucial now whatever the decision the monetary policy committee it takes it has a very prominent role and it has a significant effect on indian economy so mpc should very consciously and very 
effectively take decision with respect to whether it is inflation or whether it is a uh, interest rate or repo rate all these aspects whatever the steps it take it has to be uh, discussed and it has to be debated within the committee with government also to make sure that it is not going to cause any dent on indian economy this is about this article let's move to the next one the next article this article has been written from a political perspective this article talks about the achievements of prime minister modi but if you uh, consider from exam perspective these kind of articles are not important because uh, usually you don't get any questions which has a political themes in it so what we will do is we will see this entire article from the perspective of india and what are the changes and what are the steps we have taken with respect to governance we have taken with respect to internal security economy from this perspective let us discuss this article uh, there are five points have been mentioned uh, you can use these points in your answer that's why i made it as simple as possible let's get into the discussion of this India hosted the G20 summit last month in New Delhi. There were around 200 meetings in 60 different cities around the country, and it was a spectacular success. And nobody expected that G20 at this point of time will be a success. And even India was successful in having a joint communique that is New Delhi declaration at the end of it. It means that all the countries they came together. It shows that there is a consensus in the declaration. It means that. India has a very strong role as a negotiator and it has been respected around the country. See, we were facing the global tension, the geopolitical issues, the Russia-Ukraine crisis was going on. And even in between all these issues, uh, India was successful in taking signatures, taking approvals from all the countries, the G8 countries and the Russia and China and other uh, countries as well. This shows that bridging role of India, it acts as connectivity factor between global south and global north. So that role has been appreciated, that role has been respected and also India helped to widen G20 family. The African Union has been added to the G20. So it shows that the leadership quality of G20 and it shows that the role of India to give that platform for the global south and especially the least developing countries, their voice and concerns have been respected. The, it, if you look at this entire idea, is the idea is taking everyone along forging a consensus see whatever the issues between multilateral uh, bilateral issues between two countries but when you come to the multilateral forum like these it is our responsibility and duty to have that coordination to have that uh, overall development for the entire uh, world economy so in that matter india played very important role india forged that consensus and india acted as a builder of bridges between all these countries Let's see the role of India from the international perspective. Especially if you look at the G20, India encouraged the Global South concerns, their interests have been supported and they raised their vo voices and they talked about their interests. So it shows that India has a role to play in geopolitics and India uh, you know, turn this trust deficit into bridges of shared confidence. Both uh, Global South and Global North, both these, they were comfortable having those discussions and India provided that platform. And even if you look at that IMEC corridor, that is India, Middle East, European Union Economic Corridor. And even this corridor was also supported by almost all the countries. See, in this uh, IMEC corridor, USA has no role to play in it, but still USA supported uh, financially and technically, it has told that we are going to financially and technically support this IMEC corridor. It means that world is considering taking India very seriously, it is respecting India's economic growth. See, this kind of corridor, this kind of agreement, it shows that these are all an event to foster the unity among leaders because it shows that countries are ready to come together, they are ready to coordinate and collaborate with each other for overall development. So, India is uh, successful in developing that unity in the international arena. And the second point, uh, uh, the author talks about bilateral issues. See, India has issue with our bilateral, uh, with our neighboring countries. See, our issues with China and Pakistan, everybody knows, even we had a war with uh, China and Pakistan. But even the good neighbors, con uh, considering Bangladesh and Nepal, even with these countries, we have issues. And India is taking proactive steps in resolving the issues with friendly countries also. India signed a land boundary uh, agreement with Bangladesh. 
See, both the countries since uh, Bangladesh was created in 1971, and since 1971, there are some issues with respect to boundaries, and both the countries were they could not able to solve these issues. But recently, India and Bangladesh they have signed this land boundary agreement. After four decades, it shows that India is willing to have that friendly relationship with our neighboring countries. We are ready to uh, take them. We are ready. we are in a position to respect their interest and their priorities also see if we look at from a indian perspective it is not easy to sign these kind of agreements uh, between neighboring countries because indian political it is very diverse and even political parties they are uh, they were not in support of these kind of agreements it usually it gets into a lot of discussion debates in the parliament and state governments usually they go for resolutions against these kind of agreement but still india was successful in forging this bilateral agreement and through this 100 constitutional amendment it it helped both the countries to solve this issue let's see the economic aspect the third one see india is also taking steps in uh, financial uh, reforms also the tax reforms like gst goods and service tax it has a significant effect on uh, economy initially most of the state governments they were not ready to accept uh, the implementation of gst and till now they are raising their concerns with respect to uh, gst council and all these things but still the recent uh, revenue collection with gst it shows that these tax reforms are successful in our country and we have implemented very successfully and it has increased the tax buoyancy of our economic system let's see from the internal security perspective see we have signed india was successful in signing bodo accord and it was almost 50 years of unrest in assam after the signature of bodo accord the entire violence or the unrest that was going on in the assam it got ended and if you look at other agreements like uh, bru riang agreement it settled almost 37000 displaced people in tripura and karbi anglong agreement of assam assam meghalaya state boundary agreement see all these it shows that india is ready to solve the internal security issues also the political will is present and uh, india is capable to handle and resolve the internal security issues also and finally the author talks about governance perspective see it is not only economy internal security even at the ground level even at the tier 3 democratic setup india is emphasizing india is emphasizing on a village panchayat uh, uh, setup also see there is a gram panchayat in gujarat that is samras gram panchayat and if you look at it it is all women led gram panchayat see these kind of initiation these kind kind of support system these are all positive aspects when it comes to the governance of our country india is supporting tier 3 setup through financial in uh, incentives through administrative support legislative uh, uh, framework and infrastructure see all these things have taken uh, in order to strengthen the democratic setup at the tier 3 level at panchayat raj institution so uh, from all these five perspective this article has been written usually actually this article has been written that modi prime minister modi has taken steps from all these direction that is international bilateral economy internal security and governance but from the exam perspective this is not required so i have removed that political aspect i have just mentioned what it is needed for the understanding and what it is needed to write in examination and finally conclusion has been given see india is following consensus based developmental process it means that it is an inclusive development we are taken into the consideration of every stakeholder in the process of development so that consensus based development process it's a model for the world development also and if you look at it in whether it is indian economy or the governance or the social indicator the change is visible maybe from the global to uh, grassroots i mean global to grassroots it shows that from the geopolitical perspective to a panchayat raj institution from all these sector overall we are working in that direction it is 360 degree approach so because of this approach we are seeing that change and you know once everything goes according to the way we plan according to the uh, implementational objectives of our economy then we are going to uh, move in that direction of vasudeva kutumbakam we are going to implement we are going to experience that in a true sense the idea of vasudeva kutumbakam that word is one and we all 
consider uh, ourselves as a single family it means that it is an inclusive development this is what this article talks about let's move to the next one the next editorial talks about higher education and it talks about how these higher education will help to achieve sustainable developmental goals and these aspects have been discussed here let's get into the discussion of this sustainable developmental goals these are a set of goals this is a set of 17 goals with 169 target and these car target are supposed to be achieved within the 15 years by 2030 and this was implemented from 2015 and it, the objective is that within 15 years we are going to achieve these 70, 17 goals and with 169 target. See, before uh, sustainable developmental goals, we had a millennium developmental goals for 15 years and somewhere we achieved most of the uh, targets we have set for and then we have extended the targets, we have broadened the goals. Now we have a sustainable developmental goals for 15 years and we have a target to achieve all these things by 2030. This is the idea of SDGs and you can use uh, these SDGs in your answers. If you, if you guys don't get a conclusion what to write, you can mention it as uh, these are one among the sustainable developmental goals and we have to take steps in that direction. That kind of generalistic conclusions you can write in your answers. These whether it is sustainable developmental goals or the fundamental rights, DPSB, uh, United Nations, Human Rights Commission. See, these are the standard statements where you can use it in your conclusions. Let's move to the article. Go ahead with the article. See the main objective of these sustainable development goals to end poverty and along with that poverty other socio-economic indicators and environment problems. So the, it is targeting on uh, uh, economic issues, it is targeting in, on social issues, it is also targeting on environmental problems also. With the help of these sustainable uh, uh, goals we can achieve, we can eliminate these inequalities with respect to socio-economic and environmental issues. So, by eliminating all these things, what are we going to do? Well, the one thing is, it is going to raise the standard of life around the world, especially people in the developing and the least developed countries. And it is going to improve the education system around the globe. And it is going to reduce the inequality. And it is going to harness the economic growth, especially for the global south uh, countries. But the next question comes, are we in the direction of achieving all these targets, all these objectives? There is a question mark here. Somewhere we are not up to the mark. Uh, whatever we are supposed to be at this point of time, we are lagging behind. And it has mentioned some of the problems and some of the reasons why we are uh, seeing the slow progress in this direction. The first thing is we had a COVID-19 pandemic. It made the entire world, entire economy, world economy stagnant for almost one and a half years. So COVID-19 pandemic was a, was a very serious, has a very serious effect on uh, the implementation of uh, achieving the sustainable developmental goals. And now the Russia-Ukraine conflict is going on and it is affecting the global economy and ex especially the Eurasian region is directly impacted by uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict and because of this even it is affecting the food security aspect of Northern Africa and Middle East also because the trade happens in that Black Sea region because of this uh, conflict altercations happening between these two countries in that region it is affecting the food security issue also and the impact of climate change that is also another thing which is uh, slowing down the progress of uh, implementation of this SDG and will be global economy. In the first article, we talked about inflation and slowing down of economies in the European region and the North American region. And th this is also impacting the economic welfare. This is also impact. See, if the economy has affected, then it has a direct resemblance, direct uh, influence on the sustainable development goals also. This is what uh, the report, the sustainable developmental goals report of 2023, it has mentioned this. Uh, there is a slow progress in the achievement of all these all these goals. But let's talk about from Indian perspective. If you look at Indian perspective, see, we managed this pandemic extremely well, comparatively, because we with a population of 140 crores, handling is not an easy task. So we, we were still happy, we were still uh, successful in handling a COVID crisis. At the same time, there are global economic crises is going on. But India's growth is almost 7%, more than 7% in the last quarter. It shows that somewhere Indian economy is vibrant and resilient. It uh, insulated itself from all these negative aspects 
complex negative phenomena that is going on on the world economy but despite achieving all these things uh, insulating from the insulating from the global uh, uh, mishaps and managing covid pandemic but still india is uh, facing setback in achieving these sdg the sustainable developmental goals so the next question comes what are the steps we have to take in that direction to make sure that we implement we achieve these uh, sustainable developmental goals here in this article the author mainly sticks to mainly focuses on higher education somewhere author believe that higher education can act as a vaccine can act as a panacea for the implementation of and the achievement of the sustainable developmental goals and he has given reasons also that how higher education is going to help implementation of sustainable developmental goals see there is a symbiotic relationship between sustainable developmental goals and education one of the sustainable developmental goals it talks about education and here author says that if we have a stronger education then in turn it is going to help of uh, achieving sdgs so there is a correlation between sdg and education let's see that uh, or the explanation here see sustainable developmental goal 4 it talks about access to quality uh, quality of education and if we have a equitable and inclusive education that all the people all the children in a country if they are getting free and uh, quality education then it is going to help country to achieve the sustainable developmental goal see the thing is sustainable developmental goals talk about quality education and it says that we need to have a equitable inclusive education so that when the people are educated when they have that knowledge that knowledge will lead us towards the at uh, achievement of sdg and in that direction national education policy it is a positive step india is changing the education system and uh, see we had the national policy of education in 1986 and since almost 1986 we fall we were following the same education policy now new uh, policy has been under discussion and it is going to be implemented and this policy is going to focus on both secondary education as well as higher education so this national education policy of 2020 which is recommended by kasturi rangan and this calls for changes of uh, at all levels of education both at the center sorry secondary level and the higher level also but let us focus on higher education aspect because this higher education it plays an important role for the uh, implementation and the reaching the target of sdg see higher education it gives you social mobility it empowers people through creativity higher education means you are learning and you are implementing whatever you have learned it gives that platform it gives that podium to express your creativity and it leads to a critical thinking critical thinking is always necessary for r and d development research and development if the research and development is very strong then it uh, leads to innovation if innovation is very strong it leads to a startups so in turn it has a there is a chain factor so the uh, higher education it leads to a critical thinking and it provides employment skill see the having a basic uh, graduation or some skill set it is going to give you some kind of job some kind of economic security so higher education plays very important role from the perspective of sustainable developmental goals so what author is trying to say is see initially we talked about sustainable developmental goals of uh, sdg 4 the fourth goal talks about education there should be an accessibility to a quality education at the same time if you have a stronger education very good educational base then in turn it is going to help from all these perspective we talked about social mobility empowerment people creativity critical thinking employment all these aspect so there is a correlation between education and sustainable development goals and see in order to have this correl correlation very strong in order to create that opportunity we need to have a inclusive education in higher education we need to have a inclusive education and if that happens we can achieve most of the sustainable developmental goals see sdg 1 it talks about the poverty uh, protect people against poverty and if a person has a good education then he can easily get a job or some employment uh, some with with his skill he can get some employment and with that he he'll get some income some economic security he'll get so it is a way to fight against poverty and it prevents them from hunger obviously if you have that economic sec security then you don't have to go hungry you will be having food on your plate and it supports uh, them for good health and well being 
so you can take care of your health care it is a sustainable developmental goal 3 and the promote gender equality if a women are able to get uh, economically strong and if they have that economic freedom and uh, uh, proper uh, economic security and job security then obviously it is going to give the gender security in the status and it talks about this aspect has been mentioned in the fifth goal and it provides the decent uh, provide them a decent work the employment opportunity that was mentioned in the eighth goal and it reduces inequality and it was mentioned in the uh, tenth goal so the higher education it gives the job opportunity it gives economic uh, economic uh, security and in turn it is going to help in achieving all these sustainable development goals in this article other goals also have been mentioned but this uh, whatever i have mentioned here this is sufficient the you know what author is trying to say is higher education is extremely important for the achievement of sustainable developmental goals and he has mentioned that what are the goals are directly going to be achieved if we have a strong inclusive education system in our country and moving ahead author has given some of the suggestion to the higher education sector in our country especially focusing on university education here see university should strengthen the research and uh, uh, teaching nexus Indian education system is lagging in this aspect, especially the research aspect. Teaching is good, people are just uh, uh, learning and there is no implementation factor of whatever they have learned. The creative thinking, critical thinking is restricted in Indian university. So, author is suggesting that universities should, should strengthen this aspect and there should be an approach of multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary system of education. This gives an opportunity for students to explore various subjects, various topics and various arenas so that their skill set and their critical thinking can be tested in discipline in multidisciplinary approaches so this is the second suggestion he has given and the third thing is innovative innovative solution and startups must be developed in collaboration with private companies and this aspect also government is taking step in that direction also the nrf national research foundation bill talks about this aspect the connecting between private companies private funding with the universities and the fourth aspect is value based education will help citizen to become responsible towards self society and planet see just education is not sufficient there should be a value based education when the value system is strong then you can use your knowledge with for the betterment of other people also see there is a saying that the terrorist with a the knowledge they he uses the knowledge for a wrong reason if a person has a value based education then he uses his uh, education for a responsibility responsible activities in the society and the fifth is mapping day to day operations of universities with sustainable developmental goals it means that see there is a, a waste uh, management system in the university or for that matter using renewable energy uh, source for the lightning for using computers see these are small, very small small things B uh, but the thing is this it, it has a larger impact on a society just imagine if a university started using renewable energy sources it is going for uh, recycling of waste and it is giving all these values it is inculcating all these values in the minds of the student and students they are going to change the next generation if they have these values in their uh, uh, learning uh, uh, curriculum so mapping these day-to-day -day operations are it, it is also going to help in the direction of achieving the sustainable developmental goals and another aspect is ranking we, we have a university ranking usually uh, we get uh, the ranking from various private organizations they make the survey and they release the data and what author is saying is we need ranking of university with the respect to sustainable developmental goals according to the achievement of these goals we need ranking system this is another suggestion author has given and finally conclusion has been mentioned here see if you look at india india has 52000 higher education institution and universities in our country so it is our responsibility to have that collaboration between these higher education institution because they are imparting knowledge to the knowledge to our younger minds so if these institutions get connect with each other if they these higher education institutions started working together then we can see a updated society we can see a society with value system and responsibility educational values so all these uh, education institution they collaborate with each other they should come together they should work on a similar regulation similar value system 
see universities it can play very important role with, uh, with respect to community health maintaining the community health energy saving measures efficient uh, efficiently allocation of resources and waste rejection and waste reduction and development of skills for all these purposes universities plays very important role see these are all nothing but sustainable development goals when we consider sustainability factor with respect to health energy saving efficiency resource allocation waste reduction it is nothing but uh, sustainable developmental goals only in turn it is going to help us to achieve sustainable developmental goals targets so author says this incorporate these sdgs uh, in, into their in, uh, in institutional strategies make it as a part of it part of a developmental process part of a curriculum all together so in turn it is going to make the world better place make our country better place this is what this article talks about and uh, this is it for the day guys this pdf will be available in telegram channel network study you can download this pdf and also i'll upload daily current affairs also you can download that notes also in the telegram channel and thank you for uh, listening please subscribe to the channel please like the video and uh, thank you for listening i'll see you guys editorial videos on uh, monday tomorrow i'll be covering uh, weekly current affairs and thanks again